Hey guys, how's it going? Gonna continue on with Project Euler number 17 here. Number letter counts. If the total number is 1 to 5 are written out in words, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then there are 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 4 equals 19 letters used in total. If all the numbers from 1 to 1,000, inclusive, so including 1 and including 1,000, if those were all written out in words, how many letters would be used? Note, do not count spaces or hyphens. For example, 342 is 23 letters, 115 is 20. Use of and when writing out is in compliance with British usage. Okay, so ignore this because we're going to get to this in a bit. But we're just going to take, you know, uh, probably just a basic loop, for loop, 1 to 1,000. Get the string represent representation for the number, and then if there's, you know, multiple parts, we can break them up, put them together, make a string, count the length of the string, add it to a sum, and the only thing we'll have to think of is how to break up the numbers apart and get its, you know, its constituent parts here. So 342, so we'll have to, you know, modulus or divide or whatever the number and get um, either the last place or the last two places, the last two digits here to get the 42, and then the three if we know it's a three-digit number, 300, we'll have to add the 100 and then an AND, but we should only have to use AND if it's after 100. Or um, Same with the other ones. We're still going to do include the standard IO, head, IO header because we want to print our stuff out. So I'll just put here, I'm using it for printf pretty much. But I'm also using um, another header. Ooh. You know, we're getting fancy with it today. We're using the string header just to make our lives a little bit easier. You could write out your string operations yourself pretty easily by looping through, you know, a character variable or a character pointer and setting them equal to another character. And, you know, we can we can use loops for that or we can be really lazy and use the string header and built in functions that are already here, such as string length, which is going to make getting the length of the string really easy to add it to our sum on each uh, loop iteration. And string copy, which will just copy one string to another. And string cat, which will concatenate, you know, strings. So this will make our lives a little bit easier. And we're just, we want to be lazy, so we'll, we'll be lazy. Um, well, that's about it for, you know, regular includes. So I did make a couple global variables just to pass between a couple different functions for this problem. So I'm just going to put those here. I'll just, uh, I don't know, global variables, why not? But... Um, to hold the string for the current number in our loop that we're going to go through, I'm just going to have a thing like a character variable current number string. And then we want to make this long enough, or at least up to long enough. If we don't want to use a character pointer, we want to say this is... I'll make an array and we'll make it long enough to hold the longest string we have, which I believe for this problem will just be like 999, right? So however long this is, four, so 24. Maybe if we want to include a null, we'll make it 25. I like the, the number 25. We'll just keep it there. It looks nice. <laughs> I'm also going to be using a temp, temporary string. I'll just call it temp string to hold um, intermediate operations on the number we're using. So like if we get 342, for example, we're going to have our temp string hold, say, 42. And then our current number string can, say, hold 300, and then we can concatenate them together and be 300 and 42. So I can't really hold all of them and the intermediate operations in one, so I'm, you know, making a, a temp string here. Uh, we don't need to make this as long as the, the other one we're working with, but I'm just going to do that anyway, just so they're consistent. We'll make temp string. Um, also, we're going to have the number that we're currently working with. I'm going to call it temp that we send to our different functions. You'll see in a bit. We're just making a temporary integer variable. That's all that's doing. And then how do we convert the numbers into string representations? Well, you can make a, a big array again. <laughs> Basically a big number string array. I could do this 30, 30 positions for this. I think the longest string in here is going to be 9 or 10. 10 is a big even number, so we'll do this. But... I'm just going to make a big old, you know, character string array to hold the string versions of the numbers. So this will just be, you know, one, two, three, etc. Um, and then the tens places basically be one through 20. And then the tens places 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, then 100, and then 1,000. And then the word and, why not? We can just use operations on this array and these array members in order to uh, uh, get our problem solved here. So yeah, I'll cut back here in one second after I filled this out. Okay, so we got our array filled out here. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then the 10s, 30 through 90, 100,000. So if you wanted to make this work for a problem where you had to go higher than 1,000, then you'd have more stuff here and you'd do, you know, different things. But this one, I'm going to try to keep it simpler and just, we're only going to 1,000, so I only have to, you know, allocate enough stuff to go up to 1,000. Um, but that's the only global variables I'm going to use here to pass between functions. Uh, speaking of passing between functions, we can either do prototypes or we can just put them before our main so that if I'm using, say, C99 standard, it'll it'll be able to read it if I'm calling it from main or from other things. So I'll have a couple functions here. Um, we're just going to make them void. I don't need to return anything. We could, but I'm, I'm lazy. I'm just going to do void for the moment. For this problem, at least. So I'm going to call them process tens and process hundreds. You'll see here in a bit why I'm doing this. I'll be passing numbers to these, the current number that we're on. But I'm basically going to use these two functions here in order to um, separate out our digits, right? So if we have like a three digit number, I'm going to take the last two digits, put them into process tens, take the first digit, say, put it in process hundreds, and then concatenate them together for a final answer. That's basically how I'm using these for. And then if we have main here, um, this doesn't need any command line arguments. I might just put void or something. I'm not going to be passing anything to it. So we'll just return zero at the end. That should be all our, you know, significant boilerplate out of the way <laughs> so far. I'm just going to write out main first. So I'm going to have a for loop iterator. It's called i. I'll call it for loop index or for loop iterator, whatever you want to call it. And then we're need, we'll need a final thing to hold our sum. So I'll call it sum for our final answer. All right, and then basically we're just going to loop through 1 to 1,000, right, as the problem said. So 1 to 1,000 inclusively, so we'll start at 1, we'll go up to and including 1,000, and, you know, every number in between. So we'll have something like this, and at the end we'll, you know, print our sum. After we get our answer, we'll just put it on its own line, so we'll have a new line say percent D. Well, let's do something like final sum percent D sum. Okay. That'll be a final answer, but how do we get that final answer? Well, if we loop through all the numbers, if I is less than 100 or up to 100, you need parentheses in C. At my day job, you don't need parentheses, but you know, this is using C, which is different. So if you're, if we're doing less than 100, I'm just going to send the number to process tens pretty much. And if it's greater, we're going to send it to process hundreds and it'll be, you know, simple enough. So this will effectively be for numbers zero through 99. Uh, we'll do else if I is less than a thousand, we'll go to process hundreds because then I will be the current number we're on will be three digits. So we want to go to the hundreds, send it I, this will basically be hundred to nine, nine, nine. Else we're on a thousand, and what we could do is just, is just set the strings thousand, you know, one thousand to our string. But I decided to put it in the array for you know, craps and giggles, right? So else we're on a thousand. Um, but yeah, so I'll probably go through these in order, just to make it clearer. So the first thing that will hit, you know, I is one. It'll hit process ten. So we'll go up through here and we'll fill out process tens. Why not? So in our process tens that we're sending our current number here, this is why I had the temp. I have int temp up here, right? This is why I have this so we can do, you know, intermediate processing here. But we're going to set temp equal to the current number that we send in uh, modulus 10. And what this will do is get the last digit in the number. So whether it's, well, for this, it's just going to be two digit numbers, right? So if we send this something like, say, 22 or something, if number is 22 or 32, why not? Because I typed a three. <laughs> if the number we send this is 32 and we do modulo modulus 10, we'll get the two out of this and get the last digit, the ones place digit effectively. So temp will be equal to two if we send it 32. Um, then I'm just, um, just going to have a little conditional here. If temp is not equal to zero, 
or if it is equal to zero. Um, we'll do an else. But if temp is not equal to zero, then it's, you know, one through nine, effectively. So, but if it's not equal to zero, I'm just gonna copy, since we're doing uh, two digit numbers, two digit numbers in this process tens function, I'm just gonna copy the place for the last digit out of this array here. So in this case, if we say, you know, we pass it 32, this last digit here is a two. So I'm gonna copy in the, uh, the array index for two into our temp string to first build that out. So copy into temp string. String copy works for a destination comma source. So kind of like assembly in that case. Well, Intel syntax assembly. So if we copy into temp string, the string that is in our number strings array at position temp minus one, we should get the right answer. So temp in this case would be two. Two minus one is one. Since arrays in C are zero based, zero would be the string one. Uh, one would be the string two. So two minus one is one, which would equal two. And this will work up until up until 20. Then we'll have to do slightly different to get the tens places. But so if it's basically if it's less than 20, we can do that. But in this case, yeah, one through nine, we're just going to copy its place out of the, the number strings array. All right. So after we do that, we need to get the, the other digit that might have been passed through the tens place digit, you know, the three in this case, if we pass in a 32. Um, now I'm just going to divide number by 10 equals set it to temp temp can be the number divided by 10 so then that'll chop off since these are integers we'll chop off the last digit effectively and be left with the three um, but we'll say the three is you know in this case it's the tens place so we're not going to copy in the string three we'd copy in the string 30 depending on what temp is um but what i can do right before that is check if it's zero because in this case, if we were passing, you know, two or one digits, we want to get one through nine as well, which we already have one through nine here. But, you know, we just want to check if we pass it in, if we need to get the tens place or not. So I'm going to check if it's zero. Uh, if it is zero, this will effectively will have passed this function uh, zero one through zero nine at this point. But all we need to do here, since we already have the answer, um, at this point, if it's zero through nine, we already put it into here. So I'm just gonna put it into our our number string that we're gonna ultimately be building, which be string copy, current number string rather, that we have here at the, still learning keybinds of course, at the top current number string. This is what I'm gonna be holding and taking the string length of to get our sum. So we'll just copy into current number string, uh, whatever's in temp string, because we already have the answer in temp string at this point. All right, that'll handle, you know, zero one through zero nine in this case. But if it's not equal, if it's not equal to zero, we'll say if it's, uh, since this, this array here works, you can just take, you know, temp minus one effectively for the index up to 20. We can, I'll just put another check here for if the number is less than 20 that we're passing in. And then, you know, this will still be pretty simple. So I'll do else if the number we passed in is less than 20. Um, I'm going to copy into our temp string. We're not copying into our number string. Or are we copying in? We are copying into the number string. Thank you, notes. <laughs> Send me straight. We'll copy into our current number string. Uh, the value in our array, which is number strings, right? With an S, yeah. Of number minus one. Uh, okay, this will handle, yeah, 11 through 19, effectively. So else, if it's not less than 20, it's above 20. I have three conditions here. If it's not less than 20, it's above 20, and it's not zero. So we'd be passing in, you know, 21, 21 through 29. 31 to 39, it's Cedron. I don't think we even need this then, if it's zero, because we're already handling that in this case if it's less than 20. I'm not even sure we need this. I might get rid of that at the end. That might make this even simpler, which would be nice. But anyway, our else case here, if we're dealing with this, since the last digit was not zero, we're dealing with something above 20, you know, 21 to 29, 31, 39, etc. What we can do is then, you know, copy in the tens place here and then concatenate the ones place. So that's basically what I'm going to write here. We'll copy into our current number string. 
our repositioning for if we're above 20 or at 20. 20 starts at position 19 in this array. So if we want to start at position 19, depending on what the tens digit is here, if the tens digit is three and we want to get to 30, 30 would be at position 20. That's 17 difference. Or if we're at, you know, 20 something, we want to get to 20 that starts at 19. The first digit, the tens digit would be a two, two to 19 is 17. So basically we just need to add 17 uh, to whatever temp is at this point. If that didn't make sense, I'll try to explain it a little bit better. We just had 17 to get to the position in the array because the way I wrote it, 20 is at position 19. So the first one we need to get to is at 19, but the only number we're going to have here at this point in the tens place would be at least a two. And two to 19 is a 17 difference. So we had 17 to whatever the number is. So that'll work to get 20, 30, 40, you know, up to 90, probably up to 100, but I might do something a little bit different for that. But then after we have that tens place digit effectively, we can concatenate onto our number string. And the value that is in temp string, right? Yeah, the value that's in our temporary string that we got up here to begin with. So then this will effectively be, you know, if we passed in, I was saying 32, right? So this will be 30, this will be temp string will be two, so we can concatenate two onto 30, and we'll have our answer there. If temp is uh, zero, <laughs> if, the, if the last digit is zero, so say we have like 30, the last digit here will be zero, so that's this case. Uh, we could have 10 though, could have 10, 20, 30, up to 90. So we might have those. Um, I'm just gonna cut off the last digit again here just for the tens case, because that'll mess up our you know, our thing we're doing here, 20 is up here, but 10 is all the way down here. We can't do, you know, number plus 17 or whatever to get to 10 because that's not true. That's only true for these. So 10 will deal with its own separate case and make the code a little bit more convoluted. But that's all right. But we'll do that by, you know, chopping off that digit. And if temp is zero, or one, sorry, if temp is one, because we're dividing by 10, if the number is 10, 10 divided by 10 would leave one. So if temp is one, we're dealing with 10. And put it there. We'll just uh, put into our current number string we're working with uh, the position of basically the position of 10 in the array, which is 10 minus 1, which is 9. So I guess I'll just hard code 9. Why not? Uh, else we'll be dealing with, you know, 20, 30, 40, etc. So we want to copy into our number string in this case you know, starting up here. So we'll do the plus 17 again to get, you know, 20, 30, 90, whichever one of those. Um, but that should be all we need to do for, for getting the tens. Well, the tens in one place digits. The only other thing we have to worry about now is the hundreds and above. So we can fill out process hundreds then in this case. We're ready to do that. And process hundreds is similar to process tens in that we're going to modulo to start off, but I'm going to modulo by 100 instead, instead of 10, because we'll get the last uh, two digits effectively. So if we passed in, say, the example of 342, uh, first thing I'm going to do is just chop off these two digits, or well, we'll get them into a temp variable. Number modulo 100. So we'll get the last two digits, the 42 in this case, we'll put them into temp. And then what I'm going to do is send that, if it's not zero, uh, we'll be dealing with, what, 101 to 199, right? 201 to 299, dot, 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 put 901, 999. So if the last two digits are not zero, then, you know, it's above 100, or else it will be 100, of course. Put that in. Let's do that. Put in a little else thing with its brackets in case it is, you know, 100, 200, 900. Okay, but we'll fill out this case first because it's a little not as simple. It's still pretty simple though. Since we already have the first two digits into the first two digits into temp at this point, 
our last two, digi two digits. I can't talk today, sorry. However you say. We're going to send it to process tens. So we can just send temp old to old uh, process tens here. And that'll basically get the string 42 into our number string here. After this point, if we were passed in 342, 42 would then be a number string at this point. So then we can copy uh, into our temp string, as it were, whatever the, the hundreds place is. How do we do that? How do we get the hundreds place? I'm just going to lop off the last two digits, two digits now by taking number divided by 100. I need some water. <laughs> Apparently, if you burn your tongue by cooking your dinner too hot and then try to talk and say digits, it, uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it gets like a tongue twister. I'm also kind of tired, but that's all right. So we'll just uh, divide it by 100. So instead of 342, now it would be 3. Um, but 3 would stand for 300 in this case. So how do we get 300? Well, we're going to copy in th basically 3, the string 3 to temp string, and then the string 100 to temp string. So that's what I'm going to do here. First, I'll copy into temp string um, position temp minus 1 in our array. So 3, in this case, will be in our, our temp string here, standing for 300. And then after that, we will concatenate into our temp string 100, you know, which is up here. Since this has, what, 30 position and it's zero based, and would be, what, 29, so this would be 28. So 100 would be at uh, position 27, so we'll copy that in. Number strings array, position 27. This will be basically the word 100. I'll just write it out here. And this I'll put in, I don't know, 1 through 9 string. And then 100, and then we need AND, because it's greater than 100 in this case, we're going in this block, we'll have, you know, 101 to 199, or 201 to 299. It's not 100, it's 100 and 1, or 100 and 2, etc. So we need to put the word AND in there. So I'm going to concatenate onto the end of our string we're building. Uh, the word AND, which is at the end of our array, so that should be position 29. And then since we have 42 inside of our number string at this point, we can put 42 onto our temp string that we're building. And that will be in our current number string. And then since we have temp string build out, I'm just gonna try to use one, um, our one variable that we're gonna take the string length of at the end. So I'm gonna copy back into number string what is now inside of temp string. get the right numbers set up all right so in the other case if it's just plain if the last two did if the last two digits are zero and we're dealing with you know 100 200 all the way up to 900 uh, I'm just gonna copy in basically these two things here all we need to do is take the one and the hundred that's and then we're done all right but instead of putting them into into temp string I'm just gonna put it into current number string because we don't have to have our temporary variable here we're just going to put it directly into there because we can all right that should be all we need for the hundreds place and since process tens is taking care of the tens and ones place we're good and we're done since this problem only goes up to 1000 and we're just having 1000 be its own <laughs> separate case here because we're lazy um, the only case for 1000 we would need is i'm just going to put you know one, <laughs> pretty much one, into our number string and then the word thousand. That's all I'm going to do here. I could do logic similar to these, but since the problem ends here, I'm lazy. That can be an exercise for the reader <laughs> to handle numbers above 1,000, I guess. But that's all right. You know, textbooks love doing that exercise for the reader because they didn't want to do the work, and neither do I. Yeah, I'm just going to copy in one and 1,000 to our current number string here and call it a day. And that would be the first position here in our array, which is zero. Put it here for posterity's sake, one, and then string cat into our number string. I think it was, this is before and, right? So 28. 
trying to put more comments in my code, as you can see, because I'm, I'm doing that at work now too, and it just, it really helps. <laughs> I have to deal with old legacy code a lot of the time, trying to modernize it, and uh, it rarely has comments, and it's really painful trying to figure out what 10,000 lines of anything does, if it's all acronyms and no comments saying what the heck anything stands for. Terrible. So uh, yeah, I'll try to put more comments here so I can look at this, you know, even this code in the future and be like, oh, that's what I meant. So, uh, but yeah, comments help. Use comments, please. Whatever you do, help yourself out in the future. It's only good. Um, but anyway, at this at this point, we'll have uh, what we need inside of our current number string variable. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna print it out to see what's actually in there. Make sure we're getting the right answer. Hopefully, we're getting the right answer. <laughs> So that's what we're going to hope for, at least anyway. So I'm just going to print out the current number and our number string. So we can see, you know, it'll say 1 to 1,000 on each separate line. And then it should be good. But to get our final answer is pretty easy. Since we're using the string header library, we can use string length and just take whatever length is in our current number string. Now, the way I'm doing this, I am not stripping out spaces or hyphens because I'm not putting them in our number string to begin with. So I'm being really lazy with it. Maybe consider that cheating for this. I don't really care. <laughs> the problem didn't say generate a string with a hyphen and then take it out. So I'm not considering that to begin with, but we do have to use and according to its British compliance garbage. <laughs> but this should be all we need. Um, I already put the final print here. So we should be good. So I'm using clang because I like the error messages better than GCC. And obviously we typed it right because everything's good. So we should see all the strings, you know, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 1000. And we should get, uh, not that. That's not good. <laughs> That's not right. We should not get that final sum. That's way too high. I'm not even, oh, I don't even have temp at this point. That's why. Temp is zero at this point. Zero minus one isn't anything. That's that's great. I'm glad I did that. I need to get what number is in the hundreds place first. <laughs> All right, I, th I knew I messed something. I always mess something up. Otherwise these wouldn't be the slightest modicum of entertaining, right? We need to get the stupid hundreds place in order for this to work with temp. Otherwise I wasn't getting temp. That, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, maybe this will be better now. Clang doesn't catch, you know, logic errors. It'd be nice if I had, you know, a linter or a thing that caught logic errors like that, but oh well. The answer is still not right, which is which is great. That's beautiful. Okay, I found it. I'm doing a copy twice, duh. You need to concatenate the number. <laughs> if you have a 20 and a 1, you need it equal 20 and then the 1. You don't need it to be equal 20 and then equal 1. That, that doesn't work. That's not good. We don't want to, you know, fully overwrite the thing twice. Now the sum is still not right, but <laughs> we're not setting sum equal to anything. Sum could be any manner of garbage here. Don't you love how I debug for the last like 20 minutes out of every one of these? Because I forget what I'm doing. It's great. It's beautiful. So yeah, so I'm surprised sum was still a number. It could have been whatever. It's, it's not initialized anything. So yeah, let's make it zero before we ever use it. Maybe we'll get closer to the right answer at this point. Yeah, now we got the right answer. 21124. As you can see, 21124. Okay, so this is this is right. So that is how you do this problem, and that is how you mess up and have to debug your stuff because you forgot how you did the problem before you recorded. <laughs> this problem isn't that bad. See, it's only in like 100 lines. You could probably simplify it more and make it less, I'm sure, because you guys are smarter than me. Most assuredly, what was I, I was going to check if we even need this. Do we even need this? Because I'm already checking if the number's less than 20. Like, let's see. We already have the answer. Do I even need this? I'll change this to say one through 19. Let's see. I'm curious. We don't, we don't even need this. It's superfluous. We don't need it. Look at that, already simplifying, already refactoring, <laughs> yak shaving, whatever you want to call it. 101 lines of code. That's a good number. I think I'll end on that note. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. If I ever get back to this within the next two months or however much I like to upload, <laughs> I'm busy, I swear. I'm trying to get more time. I just need to 
make better time management. But if the next one I ever do, I get back to this, we'll do problem 18, which will be maximum path sum one, which looks interesting because there's a triangle Illuminati style. But yeah, we'll get to that on the next one if I ever get to it. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I've rambled on far too long. Um, I'll see you then.